G'day, how you going? I try to dabble around with a lot of genres um, in photography, so I thought I might try uh, real estate photography. What I want to try and do in this video is practice photographing inside. Uh, normally the real estate agent will take the photos, but half the time the real estate agent just uses his phone. The photos are okay, they do their purpose, but with our proper cameras we can get better dynamic range in the room. That's what it's all about, the dynamic range. Because what you'll see a lot in when you take a photo inside your house is that the windows are completely blown out. The dynamic range is too much, so it's darker here, it's lighter there. What I also want to try and do is get it all in camera without using Lightroom or basically it's just one step up from just using a, a phone camera. The main easy way to do that is to use HDR. So I'll show you how to do HDR. Now there's also a, a pro tip that you can use that's, that utilizes the flash and spot metering. Now I watched this video from Rob Trek on how to do it. He's a real estate photographer. It's a really good video to watch because it'll explain how the flash and the ambient light works. For a better explanation, go watch that video because it's, it's a top video on it really taught me how flash and ambient light works and how you combine them. So let's take some photos, all right? Jerry, what are you doing? All right, I've turned on all the lights as well. Um, that's what if all the YouTube people tell you to do. Turn on all the lights, get as much light as you can. Wide angle. Like that. Uh, we can see that the window over there, that's why. And then over here, Jerry, you want to be in the photo? Right, now that's what a phone can do. I didn't muck around with the pro settings or anything, just straight out of the camera, HDR turned on, um, and scene analyzer, and they've done a pretty good job, I reckon. So I've just got my normal 14 to 42 kit lens, the pancake one, and that's that's wide enough at 14. So there's two HDR1 and HDR2. HDR1 is going to take four photos, put them all together, and then HDR2, uh, same shit, but super high cast, cast, super high contrast image. All right. So uh, this easy HDR is easy press then it stitches it all together all right so jerry you stay still because you're going to be hdr'd all right now try hdr2 Now, so you noticed a lot of those shots in HDR and with the phone as well, they're not the best. Getting rid of the floor shine was hard. So all that stuff kind of needs to be done by a professional, you know, because the professionals are going to muck around with the white balance. They're going to muck around with the lighting. They're going to set up their flashes in different areas, you know, to fill it in here, fill in there. But if you just want a, a quick, easy shot, that's better than a, a phone camera you can use these little techniques here. So what you want to do first is set it up. I'm using the OMD EM10 Mark II. You want to set up your info display first, your live view, custom one, and you want to turn on the highlights and shadows because that will help you decide your um, exposure by showing you the highlights and in yellow and the darkness, the shadows in blue. There's another thing here, histogram settings. Now what you're doing here is you're setting it to 245 and to 10. Now what that's gonna do, it's gonna clip, you know, it's gonna clip the darkness here and the lightness here before it reaches the blown out area. So this just gives you extra leeway into it just gives you a little bit of room to play with 
you don't have to do that but it helps then the next bit you want to go into spot metering so you see there now what that is in the middle there there's a little square in the OMD EM10 mark 2 it spot meters in the center only you've got to use that when you want to meter so you've got to move the camera around right so so if you're in program mode and you take a photo without the flash it's pretty dark inside and the light is pretty light on the window so you're not going to get a really good shot there it's going to be the dynamic range is too much if you want to put the flash on put it in TTL mode so it talks directly to the camera and it gets the meter reading from the camera that's the easiest way that's like the automatic way now that's not too bad but as you can see the bloody window is still too bright because the flash filled in the rest of the room the, but the light was just too blown out so the blueness got filled in with the flash <laughs> but the yellowness the blown out bit the flash um, you know you can't chuck light on light so what we do then is you go to manual mode so now that we're in manual mode we want to move that that circle the middle bit which is the spot metering over towards the light and as you can see it's completely blown out in orange so what you've got to do you want to get that exposed properly so you've got to muck around with the settings now ideally because you've got too much light you want to increase your shutter speed to reduce the amount of light that comes in now because you've got the flash on the shutter speed can only go so high when the flash is on now because i can't go more than 180 um, i can just then increase the aperture there see so now i've shut down the aperture i'm uh, now plus 0.07 of a stop i'm at f8 and 180 shutter speed which is good for the flash all right so now that i've got the setting for the window and you can see the blue skies and the roof and everything else you can see everything that's outside now let me get rid of this bloody thing 1973 untouched kitchen <laughs> if you take a photo there it's still going to look shit because the flash is only powered enough for the light for the window and it's going i don't need any i don't need the flash to go any higher because i've already got enough power to to photograph this scene because you've metered for the really bright light so what you do then move it over here let's come across and now that i've moved it over you see how it's gone back to minus three now of an of a stop and more because it's flashing it's probably like minus six or something now that's because i'm now spot metering for the darkness and it's gone it's way too dark so you'd be tempted to change the settings here but don't because now the flash will fill all that in the exposure is for the window which is cool let me just get the window back again and now if i take the photo the flash will go off fill in the room and, fit, and, the, and the window is not blown out and there you go <laughs> how good is that eh so that's just me mucking around um, and experimenting practicing with uh, it, yes Jerry yes you can practice too you helped too I know you helped uh, with different genres of photography if you're new to the channel here and you don't know me by now I like to muck around with all different things. Me and Jerry like to go on photo walks. You know, I'll try, I'll dabble my hand at, you know, street photography. I'll try and do uh, landscapes, <laughs> uh, real estate photography. <laughs> Jerry, am I learning? Yes, I'm learning, Jerry. Good girl. So, yeah, so if you're new to the channel and you'd like to uh, join me on my photography learning journey, <laughs> then uh, hit the like, hit the sub, hit the notification. I don't know what else you got to hit. Hey, Jerry, we're going to go on a big photo walk? Yes, I know, Jerry, you're stuck at home. So, yeah, we've been stuck at home for so long. 
Uh, now you can't even go 10 kilometers outside your region. Are you going to say goodbye? He say goodbye, Jerry. Hey, look. He said, look. He said goodbye. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jerry. Hey, I'll catch you later.